where they are. Upstream. An Indian land. I don't think there's one of them critters on this whole darn river. You're wrong, Harris. I've been scouting up there for almost a year. Yeah, but the Cherokee ain't gonna let us just walk in on it. That's what I'm getting at. They don't trap it, they don't go near it. They're just letting it lie fallow. Maybe they don't trap it, but it's in the treaty plain and clear. Any land north of the ax marks on that tree is land they wanted for their own. It don't belong to us. It's also plain and clear that we've got nothing but empty traps. Now, is there something in the treaty that gives the Cherokee the right to let the land lie fallow? Nobody lives on it, nobody goes near it. There has to be thousands of dollars worth of furs up there, just for the taking. All we have to do is walk upstream. I don't know, Hiram, the Indians... I told you, nobody goes near it. But if you haven't the stomach for it, what about you, Harris? Well, these empty traps ain't doing me much good. I'll go along. Well, Anderson. If Harris is gone, I reckon I'll go too. Good. Well, come on, I'll show you where we'll make our sets. <laughs> visit the stream of the beaver. I will see these things you speak of for myself. My father does not believe me. I tell you, the white man has broken the treaty with the Cherokee. He traps our land. But I must see more than this. <laughs> it's easy for one who wishes to make war to place these things in the stream and say that the white man has broken faith. But if what my son says is true, the white man will be punished. He will be driven forever from the land of the Cherokee. Hi, Mr. Boone. Harvey.
Howdy, Cincinnatus. Howdy, Daniel. Looks like you're doing quite a business. Yeah, everybody's looking, but nobody's buying. Now, uh, what can I do for you? It depends on what you got to sell. Do you know what day this is? Yeah, it's Wednesday, ain't it? Yeah, it's Wednesday. It's also 23 October, ain't it? October 23, Cincinnatus. Does that mean anything to you? It means the winter's coming on, but why are you asking me all them questions? Well, I figured you just might remember it as much as you were waiting with me in the next room when he was born. When who was born? Israel. <laughs> Israel's birthday. <laughs> now, how could I have ever forgot that? Yeah, probably the same way I did, only you didn't have Becky to remind you. Yeah, well, now, come here to buy him a present, huh? What do you got in mind? Well, I don't know, Seth nice. What would you suggest? I got some new shirts in. Uh, They're not the men's size. Probably wouldn't fit him. I got some new rifles in this morning. I don't think Becky would like that. Yeah, might be a little dangerous around the house. Well, I know what I was partial to when I was a young'un. Since when did you start stalking pretty girls? Oh, damn. <laughs> now, let me see. I've got just the thing for him. Yes, sir, it's been gathering dust back here long enough now. Truth is, I, I can't even remember when I bought them or what I bought them for. But I think Israel's going to like them. Rhyme on it, mate. Ain't they beauts? <laughs> yes, sir. He's really going to like them. Yeah, could be you bought it for Israel yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, now, how could I do that? I, I can't even remember the day he got born. But I'll tell you. They've been gathering dust all this time, and I, I'm going to make you a special deal, Daniel. You take a look at that. It's a real good catch for this early in the season. Sometimes a man gets lucky. Cincinnati, let's have three mugs and some of that good rum I'm buying. Yes, sir, coming up. Maybe you better make it four mugs. That is, if Mr. Boone would care to join us. Some other time. How long you boys been out, Harris? I don't know. Who keeps track of time out in the woods? Well, they've been going five, maybe six weeks. Yeah, they come in here and got outfitted before they left. <laughs> so that right, Anderson? I guess so. I'm like Harris, who keeps track of time. Where'd you get the beef? Anderson, keep your mouth shut. Well, is there any reason why I shouldn't answer? Well, if you found a gold mine, would you tell everybody where it was? Nope, but I figure a lot of people would be getting curious. All right, you're curious. That's your privilege, but we don't have to answer any questions. I figure you've already answered quite a few of my questions. What do you mean by that? Well, the last I heard, you three were laying out trap lines on the south fork of the Little Grassy. Anderson, why don't you and Harris go outside and take care of the mule? He hasn't been fed yet, and he's been carrying quite a load. Now, Mr. Boone, you were saying? I was saying the last I heard of you three, you were laying out trap lines on the south fork of the Little Grassy. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing, except these pelts didn't come from there. What makes you think that? I know that stream pretty well, and there just aren't that many beaver there. Yeah, we found that out. Cincinnatus, let's have another. Well, we trapped the South Fork for about a week and then moved on. But you didn't move too far. Now, Mr. Boone, how would you know that? Because I know how long it takes to lay out maybe 20 miles of traps. Then you have to run your lines, skin out your catch, providing the trapping's good. So I just don't think you've had time to travel far and still catch this many beaver. Maybe I stole them. I think you did. Now, Daniel, I... I think Mr. Manville understands me. No, I don't think I do. Then let me make it simple for you. There's a strip of land up on the little grassy that the Cherokee wouldn't part with when they sold the territory. They never hunt or fish on it at all. Some tribal superstition? It's no superstition. It's real good common sense. Come a real hard winter, it's their money in the bank. 
They draw on it to keep from starving. Oh, well, now, that's very industrious of them. But what does that have to do with me? Well, now, I'm coming to that. There's a stream that runs through that strip, and it's chock full of beaver. It's near where you've laid your trap line. And it's the only place near here where a man could catch that many beaver in so short a time. And you're saying I trapped that stream? That's right. Mr. Boone, why don't you mind your business and I'll mind mine? Well, in a way, this is my business. Because when I bought this land from the Cherokee, I gave my word on certain things. And I don't like being made a liar. So you three just stay away from the little grassy. Cincinnatus, you count my pelts and credit me for them. I'll be back later for supplies. Don't credit him with anything, Cincinnatus. Why not? Because those furs were stolen from the Cherokee. Can you prove that? I can, and when I do, the furs will be returned to them. You sure ride a tall horse around here, don't you? When I have to. Someday, Mr. Boone, somebody's going to cut you down to size. Well, now, that's been done, too. So if you think you can do it, you're welcome to try. Handler, are you certain you're right about this? Well, if I'm wrong, I can apologize. Well, I don't reckon this Manville fellow's going to forget this. Well, I don't think I'll be forgetting him soon, either. Well, I reckon I'll be heading for home. Well, you tell Israel, I'll be by and see him directly. All right, get these furs back on the mule. We'll trade someplace else. Keep your hands off those furs, both of you. Get that Watch out! <laughs> Well, can you tell me what these add up to? Five and four. That makes nine years old today. That's right. You mean I can stop studying now? Well, maybe for just one day. Birthday should be rather special. But I don't want you to make a habit of it. Gee, thanks, Ma. You know, for an older person, sometimes you understand kids pretty good. Oh, is that so? I wonder what Pa's buying for me at the tavern. What makes you think he's buying you anything? I heard you and him talking last night. Oh, Israel Boone, you were supposed to be asleep. How could I? No one said it was going to be my birthday. Well, your father will be home soon. I'd better get the candles on your cake. Can I have a piece now, Ma? No, we'll wait till your father gets here. Oh, please, just a little. No, we'll wait for your father. Did I hear somebody say they were waiting for me? Pa! <laughs> Did you bring me a present, Pa? A present? For what? My birthday! You mean to tell me it's your birthday? I reckon I just plumb forgot all about it. You did not. I heard you and Ma talking last night. Edward, you stay put. I've got you half of the Continental Army. Crime and Atlas! Look what I got, Ma! Oh, Israel, aren't they? 
Really beautiful. Gee, thanks, Pa. Why don't you take them outside and fight a war? And we'll cut your cake later. All right, Ma. Can I help you with that? I got it. You got it? Thanks, Pa. You're welcome, Isabel. Uh oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Turn, turn. What about this one? Have a good time. Well, that is a beautiful birthday cake. Oh, no, you don't, Daniel Boone. Now, what happened? What do you mean, what happened? Oh, don't play innocent with me. Someone hit you in the eye. Oh, that. It isn't black yet, but it probably will be by tomorrow. Well, just misunderstanding. What about? Oh, it doesn't matter now. It's all settled. <sighs> oh, Daniel. Go sit down, and I'll make a poultice for that eye. like a hit in the eye. What's that supposed to do? Well, it won't do much for how you feel, but it might improve your looks. Now, you keep that on there. Yes, your early dinner's not ready yet. Much of mine, Becky, that ain't what I come for. Daniel, you know them three fellas she's fighting with? Well, that Scadden's passed them on the trail about an hour ago, and they're, they're headed right back to the little grassy. What kind of fools are they? I don't know. What three men? Three men have been poaching beaver on the Indian land. That means we're in trouble with the Cherokee. Not yet, at least I hope not, but we will be unless I get out of here and stop it. Hi, Dan. You watch yourself. Be careful. Don't let him jump you again. I had such a lovely birthday party plan. Well, I don't want to go back. You better. You explain it, this one. How long will we be gone? Two or three days at the most. If I'm not back since then, I just don't know what to do. have seen seen for yourself. Not even Boone speaks the truth. You will see that my father returns safely to our village. The rest of you come with me. Kanoda. You are wounded, my father. It is for this moment the Great Spirit has given you a son. days I will return, and soon our lands will be restored to us. Go!
you've got one of them. Looks like we scared them off. I ought to shoot all three of you, and I would, too, if I thought he'd undo what you've just done. Why lay the blame on us? Because them Indians started all the trouble. Do you know who that Indian was you just shot? They all look alike to me. It was their head chief, Nefromo. Well, how was I supposed to know? And until you shot him, I probably could have walked into his village and straightened this out without anybody getting hurt. But you fixed that. You don't think they'd attack the settlement for this, do you? I think so. My wife's alone. We live quite a distance from the fort. We should have thought of that before. Well, there's still time. It'll take a while to get that old chief back to the village. Let's get moving. Now, before you start running, there's one other thing you're going to do. Well, what's that? You're going to spring every trap you set on this stream. You know what you're saying. We made close to 100 sets. It'll take a full day to cover all of them. I don't care if it takes a week. You're going to spring every one of them. You killed your last beaver on this stream. Sorry, Boone. You can just leave those guns right there. They're no help in springing those traps. One of them engines come at us again. You just said you didn't think they'd come back. So what are you afraid of now? Now, let's go. It won't work, Boone. You can only shoot one of us. That's right, man, Bill. And I guarantee you'll be the one. So if you think I'm bluffing, some British soldiers when he gets home. When will that be? Tomorrow, I'm sure. My birthday cake can be awful stale by then. He's been gone two days already. You know something, you're right. I tell you what, we'll have your birthday cake for dinner tonight. We'll save a piece for Pa, though, won't we? If we don't, I'll bake a brand new one when he gets home. Reckon Pa knows we're gone by now? Oh, I think so. He should be home by now. Why hasn't he come and got us? Oh, it isn't that simple, darling. But Chief Nofromus has always been a friend of his. I'm afraid he's no longer a friend. Since when did the Cherokee make war on women and children? Listen to me, my father. The ones I have brought are the wife and son of Daniel Boone. My son has done wrong. I have done what must be done. The treaty has been broken. But what have this woman and this boy to do with the treaty? Is not Daniel Boone the leader of the white man? Is it not only to him the white man will listen? The white man has broken faith with the Cherokee. They must return the land to us. I will tell this to Daniel Boone. And if he refuses? He will not refuse. He will not see his wife and son die. Well, perhaps you are right. Perhaps this way there will be no more.
Becky? Becky? Rebecca? Israel? me, Boone's making too big a thing of this. Well, I don't recall as anyone did ask you. Well, I'm saying it anyway. I'm tired of being treated like I might be responsible for maybe touching off an Indian war. Seems to me you don't know whether you touched it off or not. That's what I'm trying to say. After that little ruckus we had, we spent a whole day up there pulling out traps and, and... throwing them away. Throwing them away? That's right. Throwing them away. Close to a hundred of them. It cost us a small fortune in traps and pelts. What would you do that for? For a good reason. Boone had a gun on us. Well, that don't seem quite right. Well, that's what I'm complaining about. Forcing a man to destroy his own property. Well, I... Now, just simmer down, all of you, and look at it from Daniel's point of view. Now, he surveyed this country for a land company and done all the dickering with a Cherokee to buy it. And he had to make a few concessions along the way. Well, does that give him the right to do what he did? Well, I reckon it did from his way of thinking, or he wouldn't have done it. And besides, you've got to admit that you broke that treaty by trapping on their land. Well, does that make me a criminal? No, but it uh, makes you look awful careless for getting caught at it. Well, now, that's another point I'd like to make. I'll bet there isn't a man among you who hasn't trapped up there at one time or another. I won't take that bet. I reckon most of us have trapped up there now and then when times were hard. But we never took enough pelts to make it noticeable enough to start an Indian war. Well, there you go, talking Indian wars again. What I started to say was, we were up there a whole day pulling traps, and we never saw a single Indian. Now, if they were going to start trouble, why would they wait? Well, it could be. There's waiting for a few young bucks to start a war dance. I figure we threw a real good scare into them. And that's about as far as it'll go. As long as I've been around, we've never had any trouble with the Cherokees. Chief Nefromo's always been real friendly. Yeah, that's true enough. Chief Nefromo was the one that got shot, though. And if somebody put some lead in me, I might stop being quite so friendly. We're not sure it was Chief Nefromo that was shot. Well, Daniel said so, didn't he? He said so, but he was quite a ways away. Well, then if Daniel said it was Nefromo, it was Nefromo. That could be Boone's way of trying to scare us off. Well, no matter who it was. All this talk of Indian wars may frighten a lot of you, but it doesn't scare me a bit. Sounds like you was planning to go back. I sure am. I've got a lot of traps and pelts up there, and I aim to get them. Now, I wouldn't say that quite so loud if I was you, because I don't think Dan would take too kindly to it. Well, kindly or not, if he interferes with me again, I'll give him a lot more trouble. <laughs> Did I hear you say you were going to give me trouble, man? You've already given me more trouble than you know. Did you ever see one of these before? No. It's a Cherokee war axe. I found it stuck in my door when I went home. My wife and son are gone. The Cherokees took them. Daniel, Israel and Becky? It's part of your doing, man. And if anything should happen to Daniel, I'm sure we can get a search party together. It's too late, Cincinnati. They're watching the fort. Any move we make will just put Rebecca and Israel in more danger. All we can do is wait. I'm sorry for you, Boone. Talk with him. You uh, 
sure you want to go out there alone, Daniel? Could be a trick. It's no trick. You carry the war axe of Canuda. So you're the one that took my wife and son? I took them. Where are they now? I will not tell you that. And you will not search for them. If I find you've harmed them in any way, I promise you I'll bury this war axe in your skull. A white man's boast. Someday I will find out what skill you have with the axe. And now there is talk to be made. You still haven't told me about my wife and son. I will tell you this much. They are well. No harm has come to them. And I'll listen to you. In the treaty, does it not say that once it has been broken, the Cherokee shall take back those things he has sold? It says that. That is why I have come. You have taken many furs from us. Keep them. In return, you will leave this land. All of you. And you will not return. Canuda, there were only three men that took beaver from your stream. You were also on the land. I was there to stop what was going on. I didn't steal any furs from you. I do not believe you. Then let me speak with your father, Nefromo. You shot him. He would not believe you either. No, I didn't shoot him. And I think he still would believe me. It would not matter. I am the leader of the Cherokee now. You will talk to me. All right. I'll see that the furs that were taken from you are returned to you. And I promise the men who took them will be punished. We have talked enough. Now you listen to me. If the white man does not leave this land by the setting of two suns, we will be at war. And the wife and son of Daniel Boone will die. two days to leave the country or we've got a war on our hands. You mean he wants us to back up and go? And stay up. That's what he wants. Can't you talk with him? Couldn't you bargain with him some way? Yeah, I tried. I even told him I'd punish Manuel and his two friends if the rest of us could stay. You did what, Boone? You heard me. What right do you have to bargain with human lives? What's the matter, Mambo? For a few dollars, you've probably sold all the lives in this valley. sent for me. I sent for you. I hear the beat of the war drums. I see the warriors preparing themselves. What is the meaning of this? The white man has one more day to leave our land. We will be there to see. If they do not leave, there will be war. You speak of war. What do you know of it? I will learn them. I will learn to make war very well. Even one that could have been avoided. The white man trapped in the stream of the beaver. He broke the treaty. If there is fighting, it'll be because of this. If there is fighting, it will be because my son has not been honest with me. This morning, I was visited by one who was with you when you spoke with Daniel Boone. Who was this? He told me that Daniel Boone had tried to stop what was being done, that he wished to return the skin of the beaver to the Cherokee. Who told you this? That he would punish the men who broke the treaty, and that my son refused these gestures of good faith. It was too late. The treaty had already been broken. Did not Boone ask to speak with me? Why was I not told of this? Because you would not have punished him. Because you grow old and can no longer go to war. I 
am still chief of the Cherokee. You may be their chief, but I am their leader. They follow me. He's got a right to speak his mind before we take a vote. But if you're gonna be talking all the same time, we ain't never gonna get this meeting over with. We ain't got too much time. All right, now, Harris, what was it you had in mind? Look, I know the Indians have got Boone's wife and kid, and I can understand how he feels. But I don't feel that gives him any right to ask us to up and leave everything we worked for. I don't recall he asked anybody for anything. Well, he just the same as did, leaving it up to us to decide. And likely feeling we'd all feel guilty if we didn't save his family. If I were you, I'd feel guilty, Harris. You'd help start all the trouble. Why, now you... Just get your hands off of him! Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, personally, I'm all for leaving. What with us all crowded in this stockade, we ain't got supplies enough to last for any length of time. Who says the war is gonna last any length of time? Well, that's the whole thing. Nobody knows. Is that the only reason you're for leaving? No, it ain't. That's just a part. The other part is that Boone's been a friend of mine. He's been a friend to all of you. That's right. And now he's in trouble. We're the ones that ought to pay, not him. Moss, why don't you sit down or get out, whichever you like? You're not ordering me around. Now, just get back there. I still say the war may not even happen. Maybe it's never even been threatened. Nobody heard what the Cherokee said to Boone, and nobody's seen any Indians. When you start seeing Indians, mister, it's usually too late. I just want to go on record that I'm for staying. There's no use some staying and some leaving. It's not what that Indian asked. I say we put it to a vote. All right. All right. Now then, everybody, once you take it to a vote, raise your hand. All right, I reckon we'll get on with the voting. Before you put it to a vote, there's something I want to say. There's no way I can force any of you to leave. But I can tell you what's going to happen if you stay. Those of you who live outside the stockade will have your homes and your crops burned and your cattle run off. And those of you that stay inside the fort are going to be massacred. Moon, what basis do you have for making a statement like that? I've been out scouting for two days. And there are more Indians across that river than any of you have ever seen before. So you just go ahead and have your vote. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now you heard for yourself. Well. Now you see what's at stake? Your families and your lives and your future. So I'd advise you to think carefully before you make your vote. And all them that want to go, say yes. I'm 
much sorry they voted to stay. I figured they would. I reckon I'm responsible for all of them. <laughs> you told them. They ain't your responsibility. In a way, Cincinnatus. In a way, they are. said you'd like to have this. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, you watch it for me, and if I don't come back, it's yours. Whatever you're fixing to do, Dale. I'm gonna take a real long gamble, Cincinnati. So long, Dale. chief for the Cherokee. I am the chief. That's sort of funny. I always thought to be a chief, a man had to be a warrior. I am a warrior. I hold here the war acts of the new chief of the Cherokee. If he's truly chief, he'll try to take it from me. Take it from you. You just name where and how. I say no. And I will fight you as a chief on horseback. to fight a duel.
give you back your life for the life of my wife and son. Now, where are they? Your wife and son are safe, Boone. the white man of breaking faith, but you are the one who has broken it. You are no longer welcome in our village. For six moons, you will go and live in the forest by yourself. Meditate. And when you come back to your people, you will be a wiser and perhaps a better man. Tell them to return to their homes. There is no war between us. Rebecca thinks this for you. Thank her for me. Food will help keep these old bones together. A long trip home. Well, are you sure you can't stay longer until your leg heals more? No, my place is with my people. There are still some among them who would cause trouble. They need watching. Well, we have the same problem here. The trouble is you can't watch them all the time. You and I know this. As long as we know it, there'll be no more trouble between us. Well, there's one more thing. Those three that caused the trouble, they'll be punished. And I don't think they'll make the same mistake again soon. I know that what you say is true. Chief, come again. <laughs> 